A different frequency production. K Sun Music. Hey there. Good afternoon. And welcome back to another episode of Do. Epic! Shit. That one kind of tickled my nose. So yeah, um, I'm gonna introduce today uh, the movie by Julie Jung or Ju Julie Jung from Korea. It's a brilliant film called Next Sohi, and it's all about the. Uh, <laughs> Next Sohi, and it's all about being in the sausage grinder machine that is the calling center. I don't know why I'm moving my mouth like this so much, but basically, <laughs> it's, a, it's a scary story about what really happens in some of the call centers in Korea and perhaps in Nicaragua, in the Philippines, and all over the world. Um, it's a longer interview since there was a translator involved and for anyone who is uh, understanding Korean, I wanted to keep that part in of the questions and the answers in both English and Korean questions. They'll be translated. Everything will be illuminated. <laughs> Great book by uh, Jonathan Safran. Everything will be illuminated. Thank you and have a good lunch. Thank you very much for delivering this uh, beautiful, touching, dark story, but with a warm human heart in it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. You stop me when the translation is okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Are there any Korean speaking members in the audience? Yeah. Yes. So maybe maybe you can also then have the translation to Korean. <laughs> also translate into Korean for you then. Uh, yes. My first question would be because I'd never visited uh, South Korea and the story was so shocking to me. I wanted to ask you like how real this is. Like, is it Exaggerated in the film in any way, and uh, is it prevalent all throughout the country, or is it just in regions like this? So first of all, this story was based on a real incident that happened by the end of 2016. Uh, this one happened in a real call center while a student is doing an, an externship. So it was a high school student who died from this incident and 
by the cause of also the externship, she was working in such a malicious environment in such a bad condition as well. And it has been happening and it is still happening so far. And I tried my best not to exaggerate any part of the story as much as possible. So a lot of things that you see in this working environment of the socio-political system are also based on the truthful elements. And uh, is it known in Korea? Because from what I've heard, the film uh, did not yet show in Korea. So I'm wondering, uh, do you think it will have any political consequences when this film shows up? Or is it like we see in the film, something like a common known secret? But so it was only after years that I got to know about this incident through a social um, news program or journalistic program called Unanswered Questions, which was covering about this issue. And then I also saw a lot of journalists and many people on the newspaper were covering about this, through which I got to learn even more about this issue. But then when it actually happened and when it was covered, a lot of people were showing their resentment, their anger, were wanting also immediate change and also it was politically covered as well and also a lot of these times um, the political coverage was re repeated as well then what I also witnessed was that it wasn't necessarily leading to the actual social change so witnessing all these things um, I also experienced that when I was creating the film another student even died from a similar incident so I thought I really have to make this into a movie through which the people were not, are not just going to forget about it, but the character is going to remain alive in people's heart and in their mind and in their memory. So when this movie is screened in South Korea, which is going to be um, by springtime of next year, I don't know what exactly going to happen, but I'm also 
wondering about what's going to happen. So uh, you might experience some uh, pushback, like the, the detective O is was experiencing in the film, trying to expose this uh, matter. But I'm also curious, how did you go with financing? Were you open about what this project is about during the financing? And were there any attempts to suppress the film in the production stage? 이제 영화에서 보면 오 형사 같은 경우에는 영화에서 나온 사건을 굉장히 공개하려고 하고 사회에 폭로하려고 하는 부분이 좀 느껴졌는데요. 실제로 영화를 이제 제작하시는 과정에서 이런 예산 확보는 어떻게 하셨는지 궁금합니다. 예를 들면은 이런 일련의 사건들을 다루는 영화임을 공개하고 공개적으로 더 예산을 이제 음 얻으려고 하셨는지 아니면은 좀 비밀리에 이런 걸 진행. 음, 이 영화는 말하자면 한국에서 독립 영화로 제작된 영화이고요. 그리고 제작비의 상당 부분을 어, 한국 영화 진흥 위원회라는 기구에서 제작비를 마련하였습니다. 그리고 어, 모든 스태프과 배우들이 어, 굉장히 적은 예산으로 영화를 만들어야 된다는 사실들을 공감하고 있었고, 그리고 뜻을 같이 하는 투자사에서 또 나머지 금액을 지원해서. 영화를 만들 수 있었습니다. 어, 말씀하셨듯이 그렇다고 해서 프로젝트를 비밀리에 진행했다거나 어, 어떤 음, 어, 음, 이런 얘기를 다뤄서 어떤 어려움을 예상했다거나 하지는 않았었고요. 오히려 음, 저로서는 어, 같이 참여하는 제작자 그리고 스텝 배우들이 모두 반드시 이 영화가 만들어진다는 생각으로 함께 뭉친 것에 대해서 감사할 따름입니다. 와우, well, this movie required um or this this movie was created with a limited budget and also in a form of independent film. So it wasn't like a substantial budget we had for creating this film. And also we were supported by the Korean organization of the promotion of the films. And all staffs, including myself, working on this movie had an empathy that it had to be made with a small budget, but it had to be made into a story. And also we had the support from some other investors as well. And in the meantime, it wasn't like the movie was created with a budget in secrecy. Um, we did not expect that it would be very difficult to make this movie because we again had one idea and very much of commonness that this movie has to come out to the world and be seen.